Hi, everyone. My name is Sophia Robles, and my co-presenter is Carla Vaughn. We are both school counselors at Fallbrook Union Elementary School District. And today we have the honor of presenting how to support college and career readiness at elementary school level. Um, so just so everyone knows, this is being recorded. So if you don't feel comfortable having your camera on, you can go ahead and leave your camera off. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. So today's goals and agenda is the first to start off by sharing what we already are doing at our school sites to promote college and career readiness. Um, then we're going to move into small ways you can start promoting college and career readiness, moving into medium ways and kind of bigger ways that we can support college career readiness at our schools, and we'll leave time for questions at the end. Uh, the chat box is always available for questions if you want to ask throughout before you forget, and we'll have um, Carla, Carla monitoring that when I'm speaking and then vice versa when we switch. Will you receive a copy of the slides? Yes, you will, um, especially because there's links, live links in there that would be really helpful if you do decide to create a career day for yourself. So yes, you will. Yes, the goal is to have as much as possible linked in here for you to use later. Um, we'll be doing a lot of kind of sharing with uh, our resources. We want to make sure it's available to you after this as well. Uh, but to start off, we want to hear what you're already doing to see where everyone's at. Um, so in the chat box, if you can just type in what are you already doing at your school to support college and career readiness? And if your answer is nothing, that's great because then that's why you're here. But go ahead and share whatever you're already doing, big or small. Let's see here. Tiffany says career day and higher ed week. Awesome. Reza says not at a site yet, but interested in elementary level. I have peers whose uh, schools and do clubs, integrating skills and concepts into school curriculum. Awesome, Reza. I'm glad you're here to discuss this before you're even at a site. Um, Courtney as well, first year counselor. Yay. Awesome. Yeah. Congrats. Congrats on being a first year counselor during COVID, of course. Um, so congratulations for that. All right, that's great. So some of the things that you're already doing are some things we're going to touch upon and hopefully we get some new ideas too, or maybe some things kind of fleshed out a little bit more. So to start, um, especially if you're a newer counselor, haven't even started yet, we want to start with small ways you can start encouraging college and career culture because it's hard to go from zero to 100. We have to start somewhere. Um, we can't go from, I guess you can, but it's harder to go from nothing to going to doing some giant implementation of college and career. So to start some small things to start incorporating that in the school cult culture is having college and career days. So for example, at my school site, as well as Carla's, there's a certain designated day where all staff wear college gear. And this can also mean different type of gear, like maybe army gear, especially at our district is very military affiliated. So those are things that can be worn that day too. Also, we want to think, sorry, go ahead, Carla. Oh, I was going to say, there's a few more in the chat. Oh, okay. if, yeah. So let's see, we have um, from Corinne or Karen, sorry if I mispronounce your name, informing students about local colleges and providing college swag to get them excited, which is great. That's what Sophia is talking about right now. Yaretsi says, still completing my internship, but interested in elementary counseling, hoping to get some insight to hopefully use in the future. Yaretsi, I hope you get lots of ideas here. We have a lot today to share with you. So hopefully you get some that you can utilize in your future site. Uh, Zoraida says college visits pre-COVID. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, those all have to be virtual now. Hopefully one day we'll go back to in-person college visits. Um, Erickson Robbins says college and career work in May, slides for TK5, college and career, four fifth grade lessons on college career, school-wide activities, pause to success. Where do teachers go to college? Oh, that's a great idea to have the, the teachers too. A volunteer that information, prep, pep rally with local college, college tour, and provide teachers with college career activities. Uh, Robin, you look, sounds like you have a lot of amazing ideas. Awesome. Yes, and this will be recorded too. So if you were hearing something that Carla just said from the chat that you'd want to look more into as well, then you can feel free and go back and hear those because those are all awesome ideas too. All right. Chat before I move on. Yeah, that that's everything. If you want to move on now. 
Thank you. Okay, so in the elementary level, we want to think a lot about exposure and visibility. So even though just wearing college gear, having it around campus seems small, we also need to think about equity too. Some students don't see these things otherwise. So to start at the bare minimum, just seeing different colleges, they can start thinking and asking their teachers, what is that? And teachers at my school, for example, have flags up um, all around the campus that show where they graduated from and they have that conversation with students. Um, also, you can go to your local colleges or make some phone calls and colleges are happy to send you these things for free, especially if you're a school that's maybe um, under resourced or don't have the extra funds. Um, like many counselors don't, you can call them up and often they're so happy to send you free things, especially if that means that it's exposing to elementary school students to college and career early. Um, they are happy to send some things over. So that's where a lot of our stuff came from over here. But moving into some quote unquote medium ways to encourage college and career going culture, there's lots of different things we can do, especially as school counselors. So we have the opportunity to go into classrooms and those are great opportunities to start incorporating these college and career skills, both explicitly and a little bit more implicitly too. So something I'm gonna show in the following slide is using strengths, strengths assessments. Um, at our district, we partner with Thrively Strengths Assessment, but in here I linked a completely free one um, that students can take to figure out what their strengths are, as well as multiple intelligence is another link in here to start thinking about what kind of smart are they. Um, our friends in middle and high school counseling, they will be the ones kind of in charge of going in the nitty gritty of how to apply to colleges um, and what colleges are out there. For us, it's so important as elementary school counselors to get students to know what their interests are, what their strengths are, um, what kind of smarts they are, because that will inform what their passion are, what they start being curious about growing up and going when they're older. Um, especially by the time they reach towards the end of high school, they're already expected to pick a major. Um, and oftentimes in high school, they don't have that opportunity to start exploring about what they like and they're kind of stuck. So we have this huge opportunity as elementary school counselors to start getting them thinking about what are those natural passions? How can we um, really lift those up and get them curious so they have as much time as possible by the time they get to the time to make those bigger decisions about college and career that they've already had time to explore when they were little. Um, for little ones too, doing college and career lessons, I have to do just an introduction to careers. Um, for the younger grades, they often only know what their parents do, or maybe an older brother, or sister, or family member. So just thinking exposure is so important to talk about different types of careers they may have never even heard of um, anywhere in their lives. Uh, next, I want to point out soft skills for class lessons too. I think these are super underestimated. Uh, when it comes to preparing a kid for college. Often you might not think of this as being college or career prep, but you use communication every day in your careers, collaboration, goal setting, organization, and time management. These are all skills that are connected to a successful worker in their college and career lives. Um, so if you're doing these things, you might already be doing that in, in your counselor lessons. Some of these things can be integrated in other topics if you are um, pressed for time and how much you're able to go into classrooms. But these can also be standalone lessons that they can practice these skills that will help them be successful in the future. Um, next, and I'll go into this with uh, more detail too, is student leadership clubs. Um, so these are again opportunities for student voice and choice. So if a student is passionate about gardening and wants to be in that field, there's a gardening club um, at my school. And there's lots of different club opportunities where students get to, um, to apply, they interview, and they get to have a little taste for their current passion. Um, so I know some of you counselors may be the only person in charge of clubs. So again, think small at first and then build maybe starting one or two clubs at first and then getting staff buy-in and adding more and more. Last year, I was the only one really running clubs. And this year I have more staff on board to give more students opportunity to do different clubs too. 
Um, but here's just some examples. And again, the strengths and multiple intelligence assessments are linked on here. That's this one and this one. They are completely free. Um, you can, of course, look for different ones that you can find um, on Teacher Pay Teacher or something like that that you might like better. But I want to include things that are free because, especially new counselors, that's always nice. Um, so these are examples of figuring out what student strengths are, what um, what type of intelligence do they have, and of course explaining that you can have more than one, and um, not one is better than the other, and it's just kind of showing us a little bit more about ourselves. But then also not stopping there, um, I included a picture that a, a teacher put up in her room that took their strengths from the students in her class and had them put it on the board. And the students were so excited that they all want to go around the classroom and share what their strengths are, um, what they want to be when they grow up. And it's there every single day for them to look at. Um, so taking it one step further, besides them just taking the assessment, actually having it be visible and a dialogue happening in the classrooms um, is huge. And they all get so excited about that. For the little ones, I included a picture of a book I, I read to them called What Shoes You Will Wear. Um, again, that's just a way to introduce um, different shoes that different careers would wear to get them a little bit more exposure for different careers as well. And here I want to provide you an example of what um, our leadership team or our club applications look like. So here is how we kind of made that career connection. So for example, if they want to be a part of news crew, which is right here a description, create and star in a new show at our school, career connection, YouTuber, which is a popular one, actor, movie director. I mentioned green team, lighthouse team, and of course, adding the career connection as CEO or manager, and just getting them thinking about, oh, my actions and my interests and what I do today in clubs is something that will be connected to when they're older. So I want to make sure I put that in there for students. Um, and then they are invited to interviews, which we'll be asking them as well, maybe what they want to be when they grow up. Um, how can they practice those skills in our clubs? What are your ideas? Um, so having that student voice and choice and interest, while also doing some practical things like having a student friendly little interview for them to practice for their future. And here's just a picture of an invitation that you can use as a template too if you want to do something like this. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, Sophia. So before we go into the big ways to encourage a college and career going culture, does anyone have any questions so far that Sophia or I can answer for you? If you would like to just Put them in the chat if you have any questions at this time. I'll go ahead and give you a minute or so to um, to put any questions. Thank you, Sophia. That was a lot of information and things that I would even want to do at my school too. So thank you for that. No problem. And Carla, are you still able to see the chat box? I am. Okay, because I am not seeing it on my screen because it's- presented. Oh, okay. No worries. I can, um, I have it right here. All right. If there's not any questions, then I will go ahead and move on. And if you do have one, we will have ample time at the end of this presentation for any questions that you might have or anything that comes up. Okay, so, okay, big ways to, or a big way to encourage a college and career going culture. So for the rest of this presentation, I'm going to really focus on how to plan a college career day or a career week at your site. Um, so a little bit of why we have a career day and how to plan for it. So one of the biggest reasons why we have a career day is to help students encourage them to have a college and career ideal at a young age. A lot of times too, we have parents that come and present. So it's an opportunity for parents to have to 
be involved in our school in a way that maybe they couldn't be involved before because they're typically working. They're not really able to volunteer sometimes. So it's a great way for that. And it also helps make that school and work connection, right? By talking about college and career, it really helps them have that connection at such a young age of I'm going to school because one day I will have a career no matter what it is. So that's very helpful. And how to plan for it. So my biggest advice would be to start early. Um, start talking to your staff, to PTA, to your parents. Um, if anyone is interested in presenting at this, um, it does take a lot of time. It takes a lot of time and a lot of planning, but it is very, very well worth it. Okay, next slide, please, Sophia. Okay, so with a college and career day, obviously the most important part is the career day guest speakers. So ideally you would want to find speakers who well, for this year especially, we're still doing ours on Zoom. So you want to find speakers who are at least semi-tech savvy or have time to get familiar with Zoom. Uh, in the past, I had done them in person. At our school this year, we've decided to not do in person. We are going to just still do it on Zoom. So a speaker who definitely has a little bit of tech savviness would be very important. Also, another really important uh, thing that I like to do for my guest speakers is to have a wide range of careers. And when I say that, I don't really mean occupations, I mean also with college. So to find um, careers that, that people have gone to trade schools, people have gone to community college, four-year graduate degrees, military, anything like that. I really try hard to have a wide spectrum of careers and ways that they got there to show students that there's all different types of ways to gain success. Um, another thing at our school, especially we're a dual immersion school. So I try to find speakers who speak Spanish and English. If any of your schools are that as well, that's also really, really fun for the speakers to present in Spanish. And if you are at an elementary level, please keep in mind that for kinder especially, they don't have a lot of stamina to listen to speakers. So maybe just one or two speakers for the lower grades and ones that are really interactive. For example, we have a dentist who is really amazing and very interactive with the little kids. Um, so he was a really great choice for that. As far as the career week dress up days, we do that just because it's fun. You know, we're elementary school. It's fun to have dress up days. Um, Sophia put hers up here on the screen for you to see. So there's Monday through Friday. Every single day there is a call it a spirit day for college and career week. And like I said, it's just fun. It helps the kids remember what we're doing that week, the spirit of the week, and it's just a fun way to dress up. And college and career activities. So throughout the week, like I said, you can have a whole career week. You can just have the career day. It is really up to you and how much you wanna do with your school. You can do activities like, um, when Zoraida had mentioned earlier, visiting colleges, I've done um, like video tours of colleges. You can send that to your teachers and they can do the tour with the students, you know, prior to the whole career day. Uh, you can do different activities, writing prompts, things like that. So for example, for my school, every day is a new, a different theme. And I'll have something for the lower grades to do and something for the upper grades to do. And with Friday being the culminating career day, so the whole week is kind of a buildup to you get to that day. And so they're super excited about it all week. Okay, Sophia, you can go to the next slide. Okay, so we're gonna get into the career day timeline. So I thought this would be important to highlight because like I said, it does involve a lot of prep. And we didn't want to do a training just to tell you these great ideas, but not really get to the nitty gritty details of how do you actually do it. So 
you can use this timeline kind of as a guide. So I would start it off two months before. For example, my career day is going to be on November 19th. I started this week uh, kind of really going into what I needed to do, sending emails out to people and um, kind of canvassing to see who can be a speaker. So two months before, send your invite to your school uh, community for speakers. I will provide you a template for the invite at the end of the presentation. We'll take a look at that. One month before, send a confirmation email to the speakers and plan on career lessons in classrooms. I believe someone had stated earlier in the chat that they uh, do career lessons in the classroom, which is an amazing idea. Um, and you can have them for your lower grades and your upper grades so that to kind of prep them before you can use um, those strengths assessment to kind of get them, you know, identifying their strengths and what careers might be good for them. Um, lots of ideas that you can do for, you know, the month or two before the career day. Um, two weeks before, so have teachers hand out the career day student-led questions to prepare students and career day student organizer. So these documents will also be provided for you at the end of the presentation. The career day student-led questions, we're gonna go, we'll go through those uh, at the end. And it's just really great for your teacher to hand those out to the students prior to the career day lesson, because as we know, a lot of times our students, when we get to question and answers, especially when they're younger, um, don't really ask questions. They more like ask, they tell you statements. So it's good to prep with them before uh, what kind of questions they can ask the presenters. Uh, there's also a career day student organizer as well. So the students can kind of document who they saw and some ideas for them as well. And the week of career day, so really busy week, fun and busy week. So you will send the career day schedule to the teachers and speakers. I did not provide an example of the schedule because it'll be different at every school, especially if you're gonna do it on Zoom or you're gonna do it in person. Um, so it's really kind of up to you how you wanna do that schedule. Um, send the speaker's guide to, to the speakers. I also have that at the end of the presentation. I'm going to show you. It gives you everything you could possibly need, uh, any information for your speaker. And then the career week dress up days and activities, which we had discussed earlier. Um, give that to your staff, maybe you know a little bit before the week of so that they're prepared uh, with everyday activities. Okay, Sophia, you can move on. All righty, so here we are at our college and career day resources. So we are going to spend a little bit of time going through each one so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about um, and kind of get a visual of, of what these are. Like I said, you will all have this uh, presentation afterwards. All of these are live links that you can click on and um, you know utilize at your own site. So uh, Sophia, can you click on the sample career day invite, please? Thank you very much. So here I have the um, example of the career day invite that you would send to your staff. So I usually, like this week, I send this out and I might send it out several times over the next few weeks, especially to get um, participation because sometimes it is a little difficult to get some participation with our career day. Um, so you might have to send this out a few times, but it talks about everything that the speaker would need to know. And just so you know, this is all prepped for a virtual career day, not in-person one, but it is really easy to kind of change the verbiage if you want to do an in-person career day. Um, there's quest uh, different like answers to questions, um, kind of some details to send out. So this is helpful. I send this out to my staff and I tell them, hey, do you have anyone who might be interested? Please send like forward this email to them and it has my contact info in it so that they can reach out to me so I can start compiling that list of career day speakers. Because inevitably what happens is people are very interested or excited, but sometimes when it comes down to it, 
they tend to cancel maybe at the last minute. So I try to have more speakers than I need and also emergency speakers. And what I mean by emergency speakers is last year I had our school psychologist um, who works here, but I had her do a uh, presentation just in case nobody showed up. So there are things that um, you can use well, you know, if you have a no-show. So I just would, ca I called her and said, can you present? And she was ready and available. So definitely um, do that. Sophia, if you want to go back. Okay. And then Sophia created this, the sample day, career day referral. Do you want to click on that? This is really great. Um it's a Google form and it's a referral form for any speakers. So as you can read on there, it just says um, what would be needed of a speaker. And so this is your staff fill this fills this out for any potential um, candidates for career day that they might include. Um, so yeah, so she, kind of has it all in here. And this is great too. It's another way to kind of organize yourself um, when you're looking for, for speakers. And I can comment on this too. This is what I used last year. And that's actually brought me all of my speakers. I sent it out to all staff um, and teachers put down who they think would be interested. And what was great is that most of them already checked with their friends and family or spouses or even their students' parents. So they were um, put down their students' parents' names that were interested, um, husbands, wives, whoever, partners um, that they knew. Um, so that made it really easy for me because they kind of did the legwork uh, for me and found me speakers that already knew I was going to be contacting them. And what's great about Google Forms is that it's all goes in a spreadsheet that's all listed there for me. Um, so that's what worked for me. So just a couple of options. Okay, great. Um, let's see, we showed you the sample career week dress up days already. Um, can we go to the, yeah, the speaker guide, please? Okay, so this is the thing that is the most helpful probably um, if you're going to do a career day at your school. So this is a big speaker's guide. Go ahead and scroll down a bit, Sophia. I think it's just taking a second. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it talks about signing up to be a speaker, what the program schedule would be, um, the general presentation format. So it gives already the questions that they can have prepared before they even come into your classroom. That is really helpful for them, especially when they're like, I don't really know what to talk about. It already has that information in there for you and prepped to give to your speaker so they can practice and prep before they get into your classroom. There is a suggested outline where there's the introduction, um, the bulk of the presentation, um, there's the conclusion, there's also some helpful do's and don'ts for the presenter. And then we also give them a sample of typical student questions that they might wanna prep. This is really helpful, especially for presenters who may not be that familiar with working with children. Um, so it could be really helpful for them to kind of get these um, questions ahead of time. So they already have their answers ready to go. And then there's also some helpful hints on the very end of it. Um, like I said, you will all be provided with these links. Feel free to copy them and edit them however you need to for your own individual school. Okay. And then the last thing we have is the sample student-led questions. So like I said, these are questions that I give to the teachers a week prior for the students to um, get familiar with and ask. Uh, so I split it up into two sections. There's the upper grades. And if you go down, there's questions for our younger grades. Because like I said, you might have a career day speaker and they might ask questions and the kids might say, you know, I have a cat, 
right? They're not often questions or statements. So this will be good for them to practice things like what sort of tools you use? Do you work mainly indoors or outdoors? Um, did you have to go to school for a long time? So I tell the teachers to prep with their students these questions. Um, and a lot of teachers, even last year, assigned certain questions to students who wanted to ask them before they even got their speakers. So this was really helpful for them. And that was one of the things that the speakers told me last year that was helpful is having the questions ahead of time and then also having the kids ask such good questions that sometimes they didn't even, you know, focus on while they were, while they were um, presenting. And this okay. is something I want to plan to use this year, Carla, because last year, um, oops, sorry about that. Uh, last year, I had uh, teachers decide whether they're going to have their students prepare or not, and I thought, oh, maybe it'll be cute if students came up with their own questions. That would be great. And then they were just saying kind of random comments, and the <laughs> students that did get to prepare with their teachers first really did have great thought out questions, and it really helped facilitate a better dialogue. So that's something that I would recommend implementing, and I plan to do this year too. Okay, we have a question in the chat it says, can you share a schedule for career day? How long is your career day? How many speakers per grade? And do you have speakers rotate between classes? So that's an, those are great questions. And like I said, I have my career day schedule. I didn't share it on here because it is extremely confusing and it didn't make a lot of sense, but I'll give you kind of a, um, a schedule, like a, a brief, um, description. So uh, my career at my school was from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. So there were four different slots for speakers, 8, 8.30, 9, and 9.30. So a speaker could, in essence, speak four different times during that, um, during that, that, that time frame. So they could um, be in all different classes during those times, and they would just do the same presentation over and over again. So yes, they would rotate between classes. Like I had mentioned earlier, kindergarten um, and first grade, I think we only did one for kinder and maybe two for first grade because their stamina, they can't sit there for two hours and, um, and, and do it, you know, via Zoom. So, uh, but the older kids definitely. And I remember I had a cancellation the day of, so one class, maybe only got three of them and that was okay. In that sense, I did send them a, just in case you have a cancellation and it was on YouTube, you can find lots of videos on people describing their careers. I sent them a few videos so then they could fill that 30 minutes up with time. And, um, and add to that too, the schedule is up to you and your school too. Um, yeah. My, I talked to my administrators and see what they wanted to do since it was our first time doing this at my site. Um, and I did want to start small and they didn't want to overwhelm teachers with giving away too much class time. So for this, this past first year, we only did one speaker for class and we spread it out over the week to give speakers um, more options and availability. So um, it was all throughout the week and it was a career week with only one speaker per class. Um, this year, I do hope to build on that and do at least to each class has at least two speakers because that would feel more like a career week or a career day. Um, but just know, keep in mind that it'll just depend on what works for you and your school site um, and with the amount of speakers you're able to obtain. Um, so wherever you're willing to start and where you're at um, will really influence what you decide to do. Okay, so if anyone has any other questions, please feel free to put them into the chat and we can answer them the best that we can. So let us know if you want us to go back to any certain slides. I know I can be a fast talker. So if you want me to go back to that is okay as well. Let's see, did you have multiple teachers classes log in to one Zoom presentation? So this was a really uh, tricky part last year um, because the way that Zoom works, and actually we didn't use Zoom, we used Google Meet at my, at my site. So what I had to do was um, 
if I were to send all the invites to the speakers, I would have to physically or, you know, be in every classroom in order to admit them. And I can't be in every classroom at one time. So what I did was I told, I gave the teacher the speaker's information and had them invite them to each, to their Google Classroom. All of our teachers have Google Classrooms. And so they were in, they invited them to their Google Classroom at that allotted time. So that's kind of how I got around doing that. We might have to do something like that this year, unless Zoom has changed or Google Classroom has changed. Um, but yeah, so they they would log in into multiple Zoom or multiple Google Classroom like presentations. That was the case at my school too. There, I combined a couple of classes because I didn't have too many speakers that were able to join, um, so that I had to be creative and combine some classes, um, and then just chose one of the two teachers to be in charge of creating the the link and sending it to them and kind of controlling the video for it if they chose to record it, if the um, speaker said that was okay, and then went from there. So we did combine classes as well. Yeah, that's a good idea. It is, it is definitely trickier to have it, you know, online than it was to have it in person. Um, and hopefully next year we can, we can get back to an in-person one. But for this year, still virtual. All righty. Does anyone have any quest any more questions? We will be here um, until two forty five if anyone wants to stay. Um, I will put my Aunt Sophia's email address into the chat if you would like to contact us again or further to kind of um, discuss any other questions that you may have. And if you don't have any other questions, thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully you found some helpful things in here. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. And like Koa said, we'll still be here. Sophia, can you put the link to the presentation into the chat? Yes. I will stop sharing my screen to do that. And if there's any issues with um, any of the documents, like you don't have access to them, for we try to make it so that anyone that has the link is able to access them, but just you know, email us, let us know in case we missed one. Okay. I just give my computer a second. Okay, link is in the chat. Oops, everyone. All right. No problem. You are so welcome. So yeah, we'll stick around for a few more minutes if anyone has any questions for us. We'll wait till everyone leaves, Sophia, mm -hmm. to stop the recording. Okay. Thank you, Yeretsi.
All right, Sophia, I think I'm going to end it. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone, for whoever is still here. We appreciate it. Are you Bye -bye. ending the recording or ending the meeting? Ending the meeting. And okay. then I believe the recording ending ends okay. too. All right. Well, thank you, everyone.